Let's ride and rank everything at Epcot. Hey there, ma'am fam. This is part two of our ride and rank everything in Walt Disney World, and we are here at Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Today, we are going to be attempting to ride every single ride here in Epcot, because if you remember, we are doing this park by park before eventually trying to ride as many Walt Disney World rides as we can in 24 hours. It's a lot. But Epcot will be fun. Yeah. There's some bangers here, but there's also some nostalgic favorites, so come along. It's gonna be great. You ready? Why did I ask? Now I am. Let's go. As mentioned, this is episode two of this series, bumping up the difficulty from our premiere episode at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's harder here in Epcot, because one, you've got more rides than Animal Kingdom. Two, some of those rides are harder to navigate, like Cosmic Rewind, which has a virtual queue. And three, you've got a few more bangers here, a few more popular rides to contend with, like Remy's Ride at Two Adventure, Test Track, and Frozen Ever After. But while it might have more rides than Disney's Hollywood Studios, it doesn't have quite as many bangers as they do over there. And of course, it doesn't have near as many rides as Magic Kingdom. So those will be episodes three and four, respectively. And remember, we are only riding rides in this challenge. That does not include shows or movies like the American Adventure or Canada Far and Wide. So that means the 11 actual rides in Epcot, those are our targets. Now we are using lightning lanes throughout this challenge. And thanks to some ferocious fiddle faddling, we were able to stack quite a few in the World Showcase, so we're headed there first. If you want more information on how to use Genie Plus the most effectively, we do have a 2024 Genie Guide where Molly shows you all of the tips and tricks on how to use it, so I recommend checking that out. Making a quick pit stop though before we kick off using those lightning lanes and we are headed into the Mexico Pyramid to ride the Gran Fiesta Tour, sorry, the Three Caballeros. This is a very cute classic boat ride style attraction, no high requirement, where you are going to join Panchito and Jose to figure out Donde Está Donald, where is Donald Duck, he has gone missing, and along the way you're going to go through beautiful locations and scenes of Mexico. <laughs> just a cute ride. It's just a charming little attraction. There's some Mary Blair inspiration in there. It's cute. It made me giggle a few times. Nothing wrong with it. For each of these attractions, we will be giving an objective ranking of where we think it is on the rideability scale or you must ride scale. And then at the end of the video, we will be ranking the rides one through 11 on our personal bias scale. So the first number we're going to give it is just as objective as we possibly can be. Second, not so much. And I think objectively, this attraction is a five out of 10. It's not a must do, it's a nice to do. You're inside on a slow boat ride on hot days, you get some air conditioning, and I don't know, it's just so beautiful and scenic. I can co-sign your five, but I must say after a margarita at La Cava, it becomes a seven, and when Plant Donald's there, it's a 10. RIP Plant Donald. Yeah. Through our journey through Mexico, we are now making our way to Norway to ride Frozen Ever After. This is an incredibly popular boat ride that takes you to various scenes with your favorite Frozen characters. And I highly recommend using Lightning Lane for this attraction because it regularly has an hour or more wait. There is no height requirement for this attraction, so that means, that's right, everybody in your family can get Let It Go stuck in their heads. delightful little boat ride that is. I really do like Frozen Ever After. Yeah, Maelstrom was a thing. I like it. But Frozen too. is better. Yeah, it's, it really is a cute attraction. It does get a really long line, which I think yeah. makes it harder, but I, I think this is pretty much a must ride when you're at Epcot. I'm gonna give it a nine. 
Yeah, I have to agree. Just with the popularity of the IP, the technology on display in terms of the animatronics, specifically like Olaf and Sven, at did, least in my eyes. Did you know Olaf is the most complicated of the animatronics because he's the smallest? So they had to fit uh, all the same amount of parts to make it move that fluidly as Sven, but in tiny size body. Yeah, especially when you like consider Ooh, it's all that he's doing. When he goes, see you there, little wave, it's so cute. Freaking adorable. Yeah, nine out of 10. Bonjour from France. Wow, I went from like kind of an okay accent to really southern really quick. It was like bonjour from France. I don't know what just happened to me. Um, anyway, we are in France now to complete the rides in World Showcase and are headed to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. This is the newest attraction in World Showcase. Very, very popular. The first lightning lane we booked this morning. And it's a cute little dark ride through the Ratatouille story. It's gonna use that amazing trackless technology that you'll see on rides like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It is in 3D, so it does make a couple people nauseous. I find it's not too bad because you're actually moving through big practical sets. And uh, I think it's time to go see everyone's favorite little chef. <laughs> Well, that's just adorable. It's so cute. Remy is such a cute character. He is. I identify with him a lot. Now that attraction... I identify with Emil because he loves cheese. Okay. For that attraction, though, what do we think? I think it's an eight. Do you... I agree. Eight. Um, a lot of screens, so there is the potential to get motion sick if you do with a lot of screens and 3D glasses. As somebody who's colorblind, the 3D glasses often throw me off a little bit. Also, because it is the trackless technology, there are a lot of downtimes with this attraction because if anything goes onto the track, they have to shut down the whole attraction to pick that up and then reboot it. So because there's a lot of downtimes, then there's a lot of backup in both the regular queue and the lightning lane. So it's kind of more of a pain than Frozen. So I think it, I think it's slightly lower than Frozen Ever After, but still an absolutely adorable ride and at least a must ride once when you're in Epcot. Oh, for sure. Headed into World Discovery for a trio of thrills that we are starting off with Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is the newest attraction here in Epcot. It is a thrilling coaster attraction with a 42 inch high requirement that follows the Guardians as they attempt to save Earth from uh, a calamity? Really, it's just a lot of bad. I think boiling it down to a calamity when it is going to destroy the entire galaxy and our existence feels a little... I mean, that's a calamity, <laughs> by definition. If, if, if there's ever been a calamity, that's it. Yeah, the entire galaxy winks out from existence. We I'd, I'd, I'd classify that. Exist. Yeah, that classifies as a calamity. A little whoopsie-daisy. Yeah, yep, a whoopsie-daisy. Although a whoopsie-daisy is unintentional. This feels very unintentional by that ancient. Now, the only way to ride Guardians of the Galaxy is either through virtual queue or a fancy ride. Now, we chose a fancy ride because if it's a virtual queue, you don't know when you're going to get called back and time is of the essence and we wanted to lock in our spot. Thank <laughs> you. 
Drax, it's an honorary title. They're not coming with us. I see. It is meaningless. Well, then welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I think that's a 10. It's a 10. That's a 10. It's a 50. Just, whoa, <laughs> we're breaking the scale it's for that one. It's so good. It's an absolute must ride if you're tall enough. It does make some people motion sick. I've heard that sitting in the front and focusing on the track can help with that. Yeah. I, it doesn't make me motion sick, and I get motion sick on, on simulators, but... It is so good. Now, one thing to note is that Guardians in totality took about 45 minutes. That's a lot of time, especially if we were in a lightning lane and it still took that long. So. Some to consider. Some to consider for the big challenge, because 45 minutes is a big chunk of time. Oh, wow. And that does happen somewhat frequently on that ride. So, learning lessons today. You know it's gonna be just as good? Uh-huh. What we're riding next. That's not true. It's not even a little true. What's that? If our excitement didn't give it away, we're headed towards Mission Space next. Now there's only two sides of Mission Space, but we're gonna count riding it once as riding it. And I think we're gonna use the wait times maybe to determine what side we go on, whatever one's shorter. I'm down. That feels good. If they're the same, we'll figure that out. Mission Space is an incredibly realistic simulator that puts you into astronaut training and sends you into space on a mission. Disney worked with NASA to develop the technology for this attraction, and it's been said by many astronauts that it's the closest they've ever felt to going into space besides, you know, actually going into space. Now, when this attraction debuted, there was only one version of the attraction, and it was so intense that it became the first Disney World attraction to become equipped with barf bags and have their own custodial team stationed to the building because so many people get sick on it. Since then, they have made two different versions of the mission. You have the original mission, which is the more intense orange mission, which sends you to Mars. Then you have the less intense green mission, which sends you on a loop around Earth. If you've never been on this attraction before, I highly recommend riding the green side first to make sure you can handle it before bumping up to that orange. The green side has a 40 inch height requirement, the orange side has a 44 inch height requirement, and I guess that's enough stalling. It's time to get in those capsules. All right, we spoke with some kind cast members who let us know that the weights are basically the same. Despite what the sign out front says. Um, I'm gonna propose something that I'll probably regret, but I think for science, we should split up and time how long it takes, because I think that information can be very valuable in the big challenge. I agree. I don't like it, but I agree. All right, there's only one way to decide. I guess so. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Have fun in Mars. All right, we've got our stopwatches ready. On your mark, get set, go. Godspeed. I may not win rock, paper, scissors often, but clearly I can win when it counts. We're just getting excited you with my teammates. The flight training area now. Ask a uniform crew member for directions. I can't reach all the buttons. I could probably reach three positions. I don't think I can reach all the way over there. This ship is doomed to fail. All right, I'm boarding into my cockpit. It's been just about eight minutes since I got in the queue. And uh, gonna see how long the experience takes as well. What are how Alan's doing? Comfortable by enclosed dark spaces, simulators, or spinning. You may exit the flight training area now. I could stay awake just to hear you breathe while you're far away and dreaming, I could spend my life in this sweet surrender. the clock when I got in here into the gift shop. It was a little over 15 minutes for me. That was when Alan and I separated all the th way through getting to the gift shop. 
I don't see him yet, but man, I, that ride, I hope he feels better than I do, but he went on orange, so. All right, so either Alan got stuck in actual spas. Storming directly over your Mars landing site. Proximity alert. <laughs> or it takes way longer to do orange. Let's hope it's the second one. I don't think he wants to live in Spas, or maybe he side rendezvoused for lava. That would have been a good move. All right, there's a big group of people coming off now. Still no sign of Alan. Hope he didn't get in a space lava kerfuffle trying to do under the table business deals. Or maybe he thought he shouldn't do it under the table despite what Max and I have told him. And he got arrested in Spas for selling lava. He might live in space now. We may have lost him. Oh, there he comes. Just kidding. Just when all hope was almost lost, he comes like a beacon of hope, a beacon of triumph for riding the orange version of Mission Spas. There he is. Reunited. You did not get lost to Spas. I did not get lost to Spas. No. I, th I thought that maybe you had a lava deal gone wrong. You know, we did go to Mars. Where'd you go? I went around the Earth. Oh, we had different experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Mars. My whole experience took 15 minutes. My whole experience took about 24 minutes. So it does seem like Earth mission is better. Even though you had a little bit longer wait, it sounds yeah. like to actually get on. Yeah. Um, it sounds like Earth mission is a little bit shorter of an experience. It feels shorter. Like at the time actually in the capsule feels shorter yeah. than the Mars mission. So that means when we do this in a big challenge, green side. Oh no, we have to do the green side. Oh no, I had to take the orange side for science. Do you like the orange side? It was fun. I had a good time. We are different people. Um, okay, but objectively, what would you rate this? It's hard because it makes so many people motion sick and I feel like that has to be a factor, but also shouldn't be a factor. Right. Um, I think in totality, I'll give it, I would give it like a five, four or five. I think I would give it a six. I think okay. it's better than an average attraction. I think uh, it may make you motion sick. It may make you very That's motion fair. sick. So keep that in mind. But I think the technology used on this attraction, I think the immersion of this attraction is very, very impressive. I don't think it's a must ride because of the nausea factor as much as a few other things, but I do think it is genuinely a very cool attraction. And honestly, if you're a space girly like I am and aren't as prone to motion sickness, must do. Well, after our trip to Spas, we are headed to Test Track. This attraction, simulates traffic and what happens when you finally break free on the interstate and decide to go 60 miles an hour. It has a 40 inch high requirement and currently has a 40 minute wait and is out of lightning lanes. So we're gonna test out the single rider line and see how long that would take us. Keep in mind that in the single rider line, one, you will be separated from your party and two, you won't get as much of a hand in designing your vehicle. But it is a good choice if you aren't able to get the lightning lane or aren't worried about the lightning lanes and don't want to wait in a long queue.
jokes aside, Test Track is a very interesting attraction that takes you through what it takes to actually make a vehicle and then test that vehicle for efficiency and other traits. I do think this is a very popular attraction. Kids especially seem to love yeah. it, probably because they can't actually drive a car. Yeah. Uh, but I know this was my nephew's, like one of their favorite rides in all of Walt Disney World, partly because they got to go fast in a car and partly because they got to design the car and then kind of compete against each other. So I do think there are some fun elements to test ride. With that though, uh, I think we put it at a seven, seven out of 10. I will agree with the seven. I think it's more popular than Mission Space, oh, probably sure. more of a must do for most people than Mission Space, but I don't think it's as good as Remy's Ride Tooth Adventure or Frozen Ever After. This is just one of the sort of long-held staples at Epcot. I kind of think Soren's is in that same category. Maybe not the same ranking, but the same category. But And I am excited for them to upgrade it. It's going under renovation at some point to get a new theme, new look, which I, I do think it needs. Yeah. I wish it was going to be Sugar Rush and Wreck-It Ralph because that seems right for the picking. But still excited for it to get some love. And the good news is now that we're done with all the thrill rides, particularly Mission Space, we can eat. Yes, food time. Yes. <laughs> Swung by Connections Eatery. This is the big quick service restaurant in the front of the park that replaced Electric Umbrella. Not somewhere I venture often because I'm normally eating at festivals or around World Showcase, but they do have a wide variety of a menu, including burgers, pizza, salads, and everything is made fresh in these open kitchens. It really is a step up from the Electric Umbrella or like your classic theme park fair. We are trying the margarita pizza. This is one order, by the way. One. You could easily share this. And then also the General So's chicken salad. First up, the General So chicken salad. This is a petite kale blend, romaine, broccoli slaw, red bell pepper, mandarin oranges, edamame, crispy wontons, warm fried chicken, and General So's dressing. I'm excited to try this because I love General So's chicken. Sal? So. Sal. General Sal's chicken. It's one of my favorite things to order when I order Chinese food delivery. So, cheers. That's a pretty good theme park salad. All the produce is fresh. I kind of had to dig a little bit to get some of those other vegetables like the peppers and edamame. I love the crispiness from the chicken and the wonton strips. I only wish that there was a little bit more heat to it. The dressing itself is kind of a sweet uh, dressing. And when I think of this dish normally, I think of a little bit of heat, which I'm not tasting any, but overall, if you're looking for a salad that's still full of flavor, this is nice. And I am sampling the margarita pizza. This is a tomato sauce base with Roma tomatoes, basil, and mozzarella cheese on top. This is massive. This is a no my this is like my face. All right, listen, for all you pizza heads out there who love like New York style or Brooklyn or whatever, or you like Chicago deep dish, right, set all that to the side. For quick service theme park pizza, this is tops. Solid crust, massive slices, thin crust all the way through. Fresh moths. I love the basil on top. I love the tomatoes. This is just a very, very simple pizza that they execute pretty well. Better than you're gonna find in most other theme parks. Finished up our snack and made it into world nature. First stop, the Lands Pavilion, where we've got two of the five remaining attractions, Soren and Living with the Land. Now, interestingly, Soren right now is sort of over California, but by the time we do the main challenge, it'll be back to Soren around the world. Regardless of the scenes beneath you, Soren is a hand glider themed attraction that takes you Soren over famous monuments. It has a 40 inch high requirement, and I often refer to this as everyone's mom's favorite ride. That's because it's nice and relaxing. You had a breeze blowing on your face. There's fun things to smell. It's beautiful, and it's just like, really calm, luxuriating. If luxuriating was a ride, it would be Soren. Now Soren does tend to get a longer line than some other attractions on this side of the park. However, not nearly as long usually as things like Frozen Ever After or Remy's Ride to Adventure or Test Track. So it's a good use of a lightning lane, but you can probably also catch it under 30 minutes at some point during the day.
just so relaxed coming off so hard, especially after letting those oranges tickle my nostrils. I don't know. Something about that final sunset beach scene. Oh. So nice. It's so lovely. I feel like that's a... Uh... It's just a 10. It's a 10. Soren, regardless of what version, even though I do like California better, I think it is a must-do when you're at Epcot. Yeah. For starters, your mom wants to ride it. So ride it with your mom yeah. and create a memory Three that'll times. last a lifetime. Number two, I just feel like it's so relaxing. It's so enjoyable. There usually isn't too long of a line, so logistically, it's really easy to do. And it's just like a simple pleasure, even though it's not. The way they're doing it is very cool. And... Uh, Oh, I love me some Soarin'. I definitely think it's a top ride in the park. Yep. It's a and staple. Now we got to go to its sister attraction and look at some lettuce. <sighs> I'm so excited. Let us go over there. Crushed it. The Live with the Land is part boat ride, part greenhouse exploration, all amazing. As this attraction takes you through, grow different types of plants, take care of different types of animals, in this case fish. And for me, this represents one of the last remaining bastions of edutainment here at Epcot, this alongside Spaceship Earth. So I'm just excited to hop on this boat and go through the greenhouses. There is no high requirement for this attraction, which is great, so the whole family can enjoy it. And there's usually not a long wait, which, I mean, even better. You can get in multiple rides in a row if you want to. I might be describing my perfect afternoon, but that's okay. Water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. seated in your boat at all times. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition of all the seafood consumed globally. Tilapia comes and still protect the natural resources. Research around the world. These plants are definitely on their way up. We can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. The aquatic system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. <sighs> That's just such a, I mean, for me, I'm a little biased. Such a fun attraction. I do truly feel like I'm living with the land. Oh, mission accomplished. This was a little harder than other attractions, I think, to actually put a like yeah. must ride number on it because I think there's a certain audience yeah. that loves living with the land. Not Me. Love it too. I love yeah. it too. I think I think cold younger cold. ones like it because they like looking at the fish and the different plants. And then I think older people like living with the land too, but like it's not a thrill ride. So it's kind of hard to like judge. I want to put it at like a four and a half. I think that's right. It's, we're just watching some ducks, by the way, here. This is so cute, he just like, just popped out, and there's her there's husband, the like they're on a they're date. On a, uh, they're on a duck date. Anyway. I love them. They're great. They're going to ride Little with the Land. I hope so. I agree, it's tough to place. I think 4.5 is right. I think it fits in terms of like the must ride objective scale. If you're at Epcot and you only have one day here yeah. and you have to pick and choose things, I don't think you should choose Living with the Land over some of the other attractions we've done. So that's kind of a factor too. Uh, but speaking of bus rides, boy, do we have a banger next. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special drive-through open house. There's sight, sound, smell, touch, cookie, cookie, go! We see with our eyes can control the eyes of the imagination. <laughs> with MIT and EMT, you can see things differently. A journey into imagination with Figment, which is a slow moving family dark ride featuring Figment. And of all the rides I've ridden at Epcot, it is the one I rode most recently. That is true. Mm -hmm. Now, this attraction has gone through a number of iterations. 
I think this current one sits at a three. Yeah, that's generous. I think this is definitely not a must ride for most people in the parks, unless you have some kind of nostalgic connection to Figment the character, which a lot of people do. That's true. And I think Figment deserves better. I agree. Like, like this is not a three as an indictment of Figment the character. No. It's the indictment of where you have put that beloved character, I think. Why the skunk smell? Why the moon? It's the, mostly the moon. Yeah, and if you don't know who Figment is, I feel like you definitely don't need to ride this ride because you are going to leave very confused. Yeah, you, you have a lot more questions than answers. The good news, however, if you are a Figment fan or you love this attraction, I love that for you. It basically never has a wait. So. Yeah. Up next is the Seas of Nemo and Friends. This is a slow-moving family dark ride that follows Marlon and Dora as they search for Nemo and take you through a number of scenes from the film, including your favorite characters like Molly's favorite, the sharks. Yeah, it gets an automatic 10 because they're sharks. We haven't even ridden the ride ten. yet. Uh, okay. Nemo! <laughs> Don't worry, just keep your eyes open for him along the way. Nemo! Nemo! Oh, no. I wonder if clownfish taste funny. Just rode the seas, and before we give our ratings, gotta say hello to a friend. Cause we're making good time and it would be rude not to. Let's see if he's feeling chatty today. <gasps> hey, Mr. Eel, how are you? It's been a minute. Well, hey, Molly. Hey, ma'am, fam. How are y'all? Oh, you know, we're just doing a challenge where we ride every ride in Epcot, but we had a minute, so we thought we'd come say hey. Well, that's nice. Y'all winning? Yeah, so far so good, but uh, we're going to try and ride all the rides in Disney World uh, in 24 hours for the biggest challenge. I don't know if I'll have time to come see you during that one. Uh, won't have time for a lot of hellos. But anyway, I just wanted to say hi, and then I love you, and I hope you're doing well, and um, give the missus my love. Well, thanks, Molly. Thanks, ma'am, fam. Y'all come say hi. Keep washing those hands. Bye. Do you get it now? Do you get why I love the eels? <sighs> well, it was nice to see Mr. Eel again. Always a pleasure to see a good friend. I really do like the season with Nemo and Friends. I think it is so cute and underrated, and I especially like the part at the end where they project the characters into the actual aquariums, so you can see like real fish and sharks swimming amongst the Nemo characters. That's very cool. That said, it's probably not a must ride for most people. No, I think if you've got a child who is ocean obsessed, this is probably a place to stop by. If you're looking for a place that's quiet in the dark and the air conditioning, you get out of the sun for a bit in the hot summer months, this is a good place to stop by. But outside of that, in terms of a must ride skate. I think it's close to Great Fiesta Tour. I think it's probably like a four. I'd agree with that. It's a four. One ride left. Last one. Headed to our final ride, attraction number 11 for the day, Spaceship Earth. This is an opening day family dark ride that takes place inside Spaceship Earth, the giant golf ball that is the mascot of Epcot. Now it's gone through some transitions over time, but it tells you the history and story of communication. And it is hosted by old Deuteronomy herself. Currently has a five minute wait, which is perfect. And you'll often find it this low. However, earlier in the day when more folks are coming into the park, it might get a little bit longer. So if it looks like it's 20 minutes or longer, I usually recommend scooting past it and then coming back at a later time. But for now, let's go visit that grand and miraculous spaceship. And then uh, afterwards, we have to figure out how we rank these rides against each other. Thank you. 
Classic. Truly. A and a classic. I mean, it's an attraction in the icon of the park. It's a banger to end on. It really is. What do we want to score it, though, on the must-ride scale? Gosh, I'm so conflicted. Seven? I will get on board with a seven. I think a seven is good because of all of these kind of, like, slower family-style attractions in the front half of the park, I think this is the number one. 100%. Opening day ride, classic Epcot. There's so many scenes that Disney fans love, like the scientist or the guy beating Papyrus the or the monk, the Phoenicians. So, like, I think it's a smell of Rome. You know, it's just, it's lovely. If you're going to do one dark ride, this is the one to do. Oh, if you don't know anything about Spaceship Earth, or you're not nostalgic for Epcot at all, maybe you don't have to do it, but I think for most like Disney fans, this is a must do. Okay, well that brings us to the end of the Ride and Rank Everything in Epcot. We officially rode all 11 rides here. What do we learn? All right, moving into the big challenge, notes from Epcot number one, Guardians could take a very long time, yes. even going through the lightning lane, so we will have to plan accordingly as best we can. Two, we saw that Remy did go down today, and it has been to do that quite frequently because of the RFID technology that Molly has talked about earlier, so we have to take that into account as well. Third, on Mission Space, it looks like the green mission is shorter, so unless there's a huge line discrepancy, thank goodness we get the right green. And lastly, for Test Track, we're going to have to do the single rider line because not only is it shorter, it also cuts off the vehicle creation process, and that's valuable minutes for us as we try to attempt this challenge. And now we have rated every attraction on a must-ride scale, being as objective as possible, but it's time for our rankings, pitting everything against each other and our own personal bias with favorites. You're up first. Right, okay. My personal favorite list starts with Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, then Soren, then Spaceship Earth, followed by Living with the Land, Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Test Track, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Grand Fiesta Tour, Mission Space, and lastly, Figment. Interesting, interesting. What's yours? For me, at Epcot, number one, Guardians of the Galaxy, Fair. Cosmic Rewind, number two, Soarin', number three, Spaceship Earth, number four, Frozen Ever After, what? number five, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, number six, Live with the Land, number seven, The Seas with Nemo and Friends. I love the sea base, but I did not allow myself to count the sea base in the attraction because I was just looking at the attraction alone, that's where it ranks. Number eight, Grand Fiesta Tour. Number nine, Mission Spas. Number 10, Test Track. And number 11, Journey into Imagination with Big Man. So those are our rankings of the Epcot rides. Let us know yours, or your favorite, or least favorite down below in the comments. Next up, we're going to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Fewer attractions than here, but more bangers, making it more logistically <laughs> tricky, so the difficulty goes up once again. But until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join with the man fam in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. It has been. Bye, everybody. Bye.